Well, first we're going to say what has been done already. And these, there were three shelters, more or less identical to this one, on this road, which were built in 1976, when the Honorable Max Pant was the governor of, I'm sorry, when the ex-governor Max Pant was the president of the Rotary Club of St. Martin, he organized a project and built these three uh, shelters. And they were built basically for people who were working at Point Blanche and who would be walking on the road during the day and this, this was to provide shelter from them just from the rain. So anyway, time went by, the road got rebuilt, the port got changed and we end up with only one of these shelters and this is it. And reset, it's, been, it's been refurbished five times that I can remember and recently uh, we did it again and um, we are here to uh, mark the unveiling of this shelter which has a big sign on it which welcomes the people who are passing by to the island on behalf of Rotary International. Um, John Caputo, the president of the Rotary Club of St. Martin. Um, I think one, this project is a very important one because as colleague mentioned that we have almost two million cruise ship passengers per year that visit the island of St. Martin and for a long time this shelter was in a pretty deplorable state under mud uh, no landscaping the signage was uh, old and uh, really an eyesore to the area and uh, club members decided to get together to spend a few Saturdays to uh, come out scrape the paint clean the mud um, make the, the surrounding area a lot more attractive and then you know, roll up our sleeves and uh, do a hands-on project of painting and uh, bringing this shelter back to life. And as you can see with the new signage that's been installed, it's going to be very visibly welcoming uh, our over 2 million cruise ship passengers to St. Martin uh, every year. And uh, that's something that the Rotary really believes in is spreading awareness of what we do and uh, being visible in the community and uh, not only like projects like this but projects that uh, change the lives of, of so many people such as uh, a lot of hunger uh, hunger projects feeding children providing uh, education and literacy projects things that really are impactful to the community in which we serve this is just a, a symbol letting people know that rotary is in fact on st martin is active on st martin and uh, is definitely wanting to do our part to make St. Martin and the world a better place. We obviously could not have done this without the help of uh, supporters and uh, obviously we've, we've had some people that have really stepped up to the plate including uh, a former Rotarian Bob McDonough with the company Green Fingers who came out with his crew on several uh, occasions to make the landscaping and the rocks and uh, help create a situation to keep the mud from coming back and uh, that was something that we, we drove by and saw that the amazing work that uh, him and his team did was just uh, breathtaking and uh, very much applaud and thank them and obviously paint is not free either and uh, a supporter of Rotary uh, Sherwin Williams offered to donate all the materials to uh, to make this happen and uh, we had a a donation from a, a Rotarian in the United States and a uh, father of Rotarian here in St. Martin, uh, Sokrin, to, uh, to do the signage um, to, and actually came out fantastically and um, that was done by uh, Tim Salt here on St. Martin locally and uh, we think that the end result was, was quite, quite nice and very attractive for the area. We also had uh, volunteers from the AUC um, come out to help us and uh, they volunteer their time when they're on the island also helping make uh, the projects uh, doing hands-on projects within the community and things like this um, they help us in many of our other projects uh, we couldn't do without their support. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. 
Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. Hey guys, did you know that now with Telcel, if you accumulate $25 or more within one calendar month, you get 15 more? 15 more? Yes, 15 more. However you want. So I can top up $3 now, $10 next week, and so on until I reach or pass $25? That's right. Get 15 more. Wow! I feel like a 15 again. Yeah. Right. Accumulate $25 or more within one calendar month and get 15 more. Tell sell when you want more. Need a loan that's quick and easy. yourself a brand new car from the St. Martin's Lions Club and Port of St. Martin Group of Companies. Get your tickets for the Gold Green Car Raffle and win a brand new Toyota Prius C. Tickets only $10. Get your tickets today. The more tickets you get, the more chances you have. Friday, Sunday, October 8th. Tickets available at Van Gogh Redeen, Madame Estate. Big D's Photo Studio on the Pondville. And from all Lion members and at the Lion's Den. Get your tickets to win a brand new car from the St. Martin's Lions Club and Port of St. Martin Group of Companies. Uh, my name is uh, Peter Prinsen and my function is that I'm a physical and a manual therapist here on St. Martin and I work in Colby in the healthcare clinic, St. Martin Healthcare Clinic. And today, today here uh, on Saturday, I'm uh, well. I'm hosting today the More Movement for Elderly program. Now, run us through exactly what sort of exercise that you give to the students at the center. Well, in general, um, uh, um, exercising and to keep your body fit is uh, for everybody, for every human, very important. And um, uh, of course, the More Movement for Elderly program is focusing more on the um, elder population on St. Martin. And what kind of movements are important? Well, let me say that all the movements we make in, in, in daily life, eh, like standing up, walking, um, uh, reaching to something, more functional exercises, that's what, um, uh, what we're going to do here, uh, here today. And, um, yeah, it's a little bit divided in the part of cardio, you do some strength exercises, you do some exercises where you need to use your balance, your coordination, but also to keep your body a little bit more flexible. That type of exercises we are uh, going to do today. How long have you all been doing this thing now with the senior citizens? This program is running right now for one year, so we started last year, actually this is the last uh, um, a day for actually the year, so we started last year around this period and um, uh, um, uh, the program is uh, built up and, and is um, uh, participated, collaborated by, uh, by a few, uh, few other uh, stakeholders and the CPS is, uh, is a stakeholder, um, uh, INI Fitness um, is a stakeholder and um, uh, we as a small group started a little bit and well it's 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 growing and 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 we see in 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 in, in time that a lot of uh, elderly people uh, do uh, do start to participate we started with only one mr jeffers we started with mr jeffers yeah I, that was one year ago he was the only participant and now we have a group of well sometimes 12 sometimes eight it depends a little bit of course on different factors and if people come yes or no. 
So it's growing, so that's positive. And how many hours do you spend for a day with them? How many hours? Well, it is today um, one and a half hour. We normally start at um, 11.30. We're running already a little bit late. We have to start within a moment and then um, till 12 o'clock. And um, uh, well, what you hear, I was talking to the lady there. She is, for instance, coming already walking to the place. So she walked already for one hour. That's very positive. So you try to create also awareness yeah, that not only here, but also outside this building, people start to move a little bit more and take responsibility for, for their body and for their health. That helps to just avoid them, uh, becoming sick or get problems in, uh, in, uh, in the movement parts of the, of the body. What encouragement word would you want to close out this interview with to get people to get the body fit? Well, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, realize yourself that uh, you only have one body, yeah? Um, if you have money, you can buy cars. If you have money, you can buy stuff, but you only have one body. And um, whoever, let's say, God gave it to you, be um, uh, very careful eh, about your body and treat it well. And treat it well means that you need to eat, well, healthy, uh, that's number one, that you need to take your rest. But, and I hear that a lot of times also in the clinic, older people do say, no, Peter, I don't want to do exercises because I'm old. No, that's not right. Because even when you are older, you need to do exercises. You need to just uh, do the things what, well, we were talking about um, to avoid that, again, you're getting sick or you get all kinds of physical problems. So that's a message also to everybody, like uh, come out of the chair and, and, and move around because that's, uh, that is very important, very important. Hey guys, did you know that now with Telcel, if you accumulate $25 or more within one calendar month, you get 15 more? 15 more? Yes, 15 more. However you want. So I can top up $3 now, $10 next week, and so on until I reach or pass $25? That's right. Get 15 more. Wow! I feel like a 15 again. Yeah. Right. Accumulate $25 or more within one calendar month and get 15 more. Telcel, when you Want more? People all across St. Martin are switching to a more rewarding experience. The Whip MasterCard Fun Miles Credit Card, better known as My Card. Earn one fun mile for every $2 spent, even abroad and online. This will quickly get you a ton of fun miles to redeem for travel, shopping, food, fuel, and much more. But there's more to My Card worldwide acceptance, an EMV chip for extra security, and 250 free fun miles with first use. Switch to my card today at WIB. Win yourself a brand new car from the St. Martin's Lions Club and Port of St. Martin Group of Companies. Get your tickets for the Gold Green Car Raffle and win a brand new Toyota Prius C. Tickets only $10. Get your tickets today. The more tickets you get, the more chances you have. Friday, Sunday, October 8th. Tickets available at Van Gogh Bedien, Madame Estate. Big D's for the studio on the Pornfield. And from all Lion members and at the Lion's Den. Get Get your tickets to win a brand new car from the St. Martin's Lions Club and Port of St. Martin Group of Companies. As the school year 2017-18 commences, I would like to take this time to wish each and every student, 
teacher, parent, school management, and all who make school possible a happy and productive 2017-18, and that your hard work will bear fruition when the school year ends. The beginning of the school year is an exciting time for students, parents, and teachers. Many of you, I'm sure, enjoyed your summer vacations, had fun at your camps with family, friends, but now it's time for you to have fun while learning. The new school year will bring new challenges, new experiences, and for students, you'll be unlocking new characteristics or traits you never knew existed last year, and you will definitely be learning new skills. You'll be encountering new faces in the classroom, both as teachers as well as fellow classmates. Embrace these changes and let them see the best you that you can be. For many, it will be a completely new experience, whether it is at a new school, a transition from elementary to secondary, or moving up a grade or form. To those repeating this year, I would like to encourage you, do not be discouraged. Utilize this, what many may consider a stumbling block, as your stepping stone to prove exactly what you are made of. Do it this time better, stronger, and show them what you're working with. For those of you who have been successful and are moving on, keep on doing what you did right and even improve on it because I want us to create an attitude of excellence in all our schools. I want it to be such that when a parent has to put a child in a school, they don't even have to think which school to put them in because A is better than B. We would like to have on St. Martin all schools striving for excellence. To the teachers, management and staff of our various schools, I would like to encourage you to utilize your roles where you are given multiple opportunities to prepare students to be our future leaders and for you to use that influence you have for the good. Each child deserves a chance and we know the challenges that we face. However, each day is a new day to make a difference. And I think you've heard it quite often at the end of the last school year that we do appreciate you as teachers and we expect you to continue to put your best foot forward as you make a difference for our youth and for our future of St. Martin. To the parents, continue to push and prod your children in the right direction. Motivate and encourage them to be the very best versions of themselves, not just in the classroom, but outside as well. And you can be the very best examples for them by actually modeling that type of behavior, studious, trying to learn, going back to school, learning via the internet, that they can follow. That's the very best example that we as parents can set for our children. To not just say what we want them to do, but actually do it too. The relationship between parents and school is the most important for your child's success. Make it your business to visit, to check in with your child's teacher, with the student care coordinators and counselors to see how your child is progressing. Your child will appreciate it, the school will appreciate it, and your child will be the biggest winners. Together, we can make a difference. Not just the students and the teachers, but parents and the community, and of course, we as government. And we pledge to continue to do all we can to make sure that each child is successful because we aim to have schools of excellence. Let us remember, one book, one pen, one child, and one teacher can change the world. A quote by Malala Yousafzai. As Minister of Education, Culture, Youth and Sport, I wish you, all of you, students, teachers, management and staff, the best school year ever. Happy New School Year 2017-2018. been said that behind every door, possibility awaits. How much possibility depends on which door you open first. Every day, we help our customers discover the possibilities in their lives. It all starts with a conversation. Scotiabank. 
discover what's An exception to this is if the object that is, that is concerned has been confiscated by means of a conservatory attachment. That is one where the examining judge had to give permission. So if the judge had to give permission prior to that, then the judge would be involved also afterwards. The suspect thus relinquishes the object in such a case and is, it is so. A suspect may, in fact, at any time of the procedure, renounce a good, renounce a good. Renouncing a seized property may also be included in a transaction or settlement agreement as a precautionary measure. So that is one, where the suspect agrees to relinquish the good. The second possibility is that the suspect does not relinquish, agree to relinquish the good. So the suspect objects. If the suspect is opposed, then two situations may occur. One, the confiscated property is sold before the court session, or it is sold based on the sentence pronounced by the judge. In the event of a rapid reduction in value, or if storage is considered otherwise undesirable, the public prosecutor will ask the examining judge before the court session for an authorization for alienation based on Article 142 of the criminal procedure case. So it is, it is possible before a verdict, but only with the permission of the judge based on existing laws. If the examining judge grants that authorization, then the object can be sold well before the case has been in session. If during a criminal case it would appear that the suspect is acquitted and the object should not have been alienated, then the suspect may start proceedings to be reimbursed for damage suffered. In general, in general, the public prosecutor will not, as a rule, demand permission for alienation, but only if the conditions of Article 142 of the Criminal Procedure Code have been met and a conviction is expected. During a procedure, confiscation of the property may also be requested if the object acquired was acquitted um, by the offence is the result of the offense or if the offense was committed with the object. You can then think of the boat that transported the drugs or the car bought with the stolen money. The state then becomes the owner, as it were, and will try to sell it. So, again, you have a, 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 a criminal case with a suspect where drugs is involved, they were caught with drugs in the boat. The boat assisted in committing the crime. The boat then become an object that can be um, seized. It is, it is, it is again, it is very important to know that that possibility exists not because of the asset recovery team but exists based on article 142 of the criminal procedure law which was approved by parliament can the person or entity within this period defend the property impounded that was already answered in the last answer 11, who verifies this evidence on its merit? Who determines in the highest resort if um, to return or not? That too was included in that answer. Who determines and sets a qualification by which persons or entities are measured in the determination of who will be targeted? That was answered in question seven. 13A, 
where will the proceeds of these exercises go? How will the government verify that this team has indeed accounted for each action taken? The proceeds of the criminal investigation of the asset recovery team, as was mentioned before, flow into the crime fund of the Ministry of Justice and the proceeds from the tax collection recovery components will go into the accounts of the Ministry of Finance. The control of the above mentioned cash flow is done by the present existing accountability checks um, within government. For instance, the, the uh, General Audit Chamber is busy with an audit of the uh, over 2016 of the crime firm. Um, on government's part, who will determine the allocation of use of these proceeds? That was just answered by question 13. From which regulation or law has the minister extracted authority to establish this team? There, there is no law requiring or prohibiting cooperation between organizations in the field of asset recovery. In general, collaborative work can be regarded as a very effective means of addressing money-based crime. Furthermore, positive experiences have been gained in setting up such teams in other countries. For example, Curaçao, but also countries such as Antigua, Dominica, Grenada, St. Kitts and Nevis in this region have set up such teams. 16. From which law or regulation has the minister extracted authority to establish the regulation that supports the authority and tasks attributed to this team? Again, existing laws and regulations will be used. The strength of this team consists mainly of the cooperation between government organizations and the use of each other's knowledge and skills. In which regulation are the procedures relating to this team and its functioning established? That was answered in question 16. 